This lesson describes the source code of a stateless session bean. The bean provides some methods that you can call to get some metrics on a character string. It's quite simple. You pass each method a character string and the method returns an int. The name of the bean is ccount. The current directory is the ccount directory, but the source code of the bean is in a subdirectory named vtcbean. Now, I need to mention that this is not the only directory configuration that's possible, but this one does work, and it's as simple as I could make it. This bean is in the package named vtcbean, so it's in the directory named vtcbean. And to write one bean, you write three Java source code files. Two of these are interfaces, and one is the bean class itself. Remember how a bean is deployed. It has stubs and skeletons for communication, and it has some other parts for security and concurrency and such. All of this code is automatically generated from the source code that you write here. Now, notice the names. All the source files are named ccount, with one named ccount home and one named ccount bean. These names are a convention, not a requirement, but every example I have ever seen uses this same naming convention, and it makes things a lot easier to keep straight if the names are all consistent. This is the bean itself. It's a session bean, so it implements the session bean interface. The methods at the top are required by the interface. This is a simple bean, and we don't do anything with the required methods, but they're here if you need them. This method is called every time a call to a user method is on the way. If you need to do something to get ready for that call, this is where you can do it. If you need to do something like load information or open a database, this is the place for it. The passivate method usually has no code. If it does, it does whatever is necessary to make all the variables in the object serializable, so the bean can be marshaled and passed as an argument. The ejbcreate method is used in a stateful bean to record the ID of the client and some other things that are specific to that client. This method, the postcreate method, is used if you need to do some things to finish the work started by ejbcreate, but it was not finished in ejbcreate because some things were not quite ready yet. The set session context method is called to pass the session context object to the bean. Now this object can be used by the bean to communicate with the container and to get references to itself, get security information and other things. So if you need to do those things, you need to save the reference that's passed in. Now, the rest of the methods of the bean are defined for this particular bean. The characters method returns a count of the total number of characters in a string. The upper method returns a count of the uppercase characters in the string. The lower method returns a count of the number of lowercase characters. And finally, the spaces method returns a count of the number of white spaces. This is one of the two interface definitions. This one extends the interface EJB object. This is the definition of the methods of the bean itself. It could have been implemented by the bean itself, but normally this isn't done. Its main purpose is for the generation of the server's internal code for managing the bean. Notice that this interface is also a member of the same package, and every method is defined in here as throwing a remote exception. This interface is used to define the stub to which your client program will make its actual call. This is the simplest source file of all. It's an interface that defines a create method that throws a couple of exceptions. And that's all there is to the code of a simple session stateless bean.
You need to include this XML file used for configuration. It's relatively simple as XML files go and I'm not going to go through it. You can find the full definition of the meanings of all these tags at the URL that's listed at the top of this file. A copy of this file is included as part of this course so you can use it as a skeleton to build your own if you need them. Now what we have so far is a directory named VTC Bean that holds a copy of the source code Bean itself. And we have a directory named meta-inf that holds the XML configuration file. The next step is to compile the bean code into the class files. To do this, I have written a simple command file. It's a very simple file. All it does is set the class path and then issue a compile command. The class path includes the current directory as a dot and the j2ee jar file. This is the jar file that contains the classes specified on the import statements of the source code. On the compiler command line, I always like to include the deprecation option. Maybe that's because I work with lots of old code, I don't know. But I always like to know which methods have become outdated. The D option will cause the class files to be put into the correct directory for their package names. Now, this completes the bean. In the next movie, I will show you how to deploy the bean to the server.